In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an Andy Warhol inspired pop art effect using Adobe Photoshop. As you can see on your screen here, this is an example, a fairly famous one, of what I am talking about with that pop art effect. And we're going to be doing something very similar with this image right here, which is one I just found on Google. Um, it's just a portrait headshot of a model. Um, and we're going to be applying that same sort of pop art effect to this photo. Okay, if you're in my class, I'll give you access to this image. If you are watching on YouTube, just check the link in the video description for a copy of the photo. But any kind of portrait headshot like this will work. All right, so to get started, first thing we need to do is open up the image in Photoshop. And we want to get rid of this white background to begin with. So the way I'm going to do it is use the quick selection tool. So... In your toolbox down the left hand side here, come down to the fourth tool, hold your left mouse button down on it and grab the quick selection tool, making sure it's not the object selection tool. Okay, once you've got that selected, simply click and drag over the model's face and start selecting her body, um, her hand, her neck and everything on her face there. You don't need to get those whimsy bits of hair out to the side there. We don't want them. They'll look a bit funny. One thing to be aware of, though, is her eyes do not select very well. So you will need to just click on the eyes to make sure they are selected. And once you've got that done, make sure you've got a nice bounding box that goes around the outside of the body and the head quite well. And if you've got it looking something like mine, then we can go to the next step and remove this background. So what I'm going to do is go to my layers panel on the right hand side if you can't see your layers panel just press f7 on your keyboard or come up to the window menu and select layers and i'm going to get you to press ctrl j on your keyboard okay now ctrl j on your keyboard will duplicate that selection okay so you'll see a new layer appear over here as well as the background layer that we originally started with okay now you can delete that background layer Simply click on it and press the trash can. And when you delete it, you'll see that this layer one has the background missing now. That little checkerboard pattern in the background there means you've got a transparent background. If you wanted to, you could grab the eraser tool here. And if you think there's any stray bits that need rubbing out, now would be the time to do it. So I'm just going to go into a hair there and just rub out a few of those wonky bits. Okay, but I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to rename that layer. From layer one to girl okay all you need to do is double click on layer one and it will let you rename it to girl now we need to duplicate this layer again so just press ctrl j one more time and now we've got a copy of the girl layer so basically two copies of this image one on top of the other over here in our layers panel at the moment i'm going to get you to hide um, the girl copy layer for the time being we're going to come back and edit that later on but for now, we just want it out of the way because we do want to edit this bottom layer, the girl layer. So go and select that bottom girl layer. And the first thing we're going to be doing um, is putting some effects onto this girl layer now. So we're going to make some adjustments. The way we do that is we head down to the bottom of the layers panel and click on this little circle. Okay, now the circle here um, is half colored in and half not colored in. And if you click on it, it will show us a whole heap of different adjustments that can be made to the image. And we're going to start by adjusting the brightness and contrast. Okay, now with the brightness and contrast effect applied, what we can do is just right click on the brightness and contrast layer and create a clipping mask. And what that does is it makes a little arrow appear here saying that we are now going to only apply the brightness and contrast effects to the layer beneath it okay so that's the girl layer the girl copy layer will not be affected by any of these um, adjustments we're about to create okay so with the brightness and contrast layer selected come up to the brightness here and just turn it up to oh you could go really high if you wanted to but it looks a bit silly i'm thinking somewhere around 25 as your value will look good for the contrast this one we do want to pull right up to 100 and the maximum it can go okay if you go the other way you can see it kind of washes out the image doesn't look quite as edgy but if you pull it all the way to the right that lever to a hundred percent makes the blacks blacker and the whites whiter and that's what the contrast effect is all about and i think that looks really good so that's the first lot of adjustments we're going to apply to this image done okay the next adjustment we're going to make is a threshold adjustment Tricky one to explain. I guess it's best to just um, see what it looks like. So head down to the bottom of your layers panel. 
hit that little circle again, and this time apply a threshold adjustment. And bang, there goes your image into that black and white pop art effect, and it's starting to come together already. I think that looks really good. What I'll get you to do is just right click on the threshold layer and make sure you create a clipping mask. So that threshold effect is only applied to the layer at the bottom there, the girl layer. Okay, again, we're not affecting the girl copy layer above it. All right, now with the threshold selected, you can play around with the lever up here in the properties panel. Okay, but I don't think you need to. I think it was pretty good how it was at 128. So just leave that threshold level as it was. Once you've got that threshold effect done, the last thing I want to do is add a stroke to this layer. Now a stroke is another name for it, like a border that goes around the shape. I can see just around her neck here in particular, it's kind of washed out a little bit and there's no solid black line going around that section. So if we add a black stroke to our image, that will just tidy up that neck and shoulder area. So I want you to come down to the girl layer here and we're going to do this slightly different. We're going to double click our mouse in the empty space next to the name girl. That will bring up a box called layer style. Okay, so it's not an adjustment layer anymore. We're just adding a style to our layer and we're looking for the word stroke. Okay, now when I press the word stroke, watch the neck and shoulder area here. Okay, you can see that black line has appeared and you can actually play around with the size of that line. Okay, and see what works best. I think anything too big is going to look very dodgy. So just a small black stroke is going to work well. Somewhere between probably three and four, I think, will be a good size uh, for our black stroke. So once you've got your size all sorted, press OK. And I reckon that's looking really good now. Um, so we're going to go, well, we're going to finish with that girl layer. We're going to go back and start working on the girl copy layer now. Okay, so what we're going to do here with the girl copy layer is make her visible again. So hit that little empty box next to the layer, and that will make the original image reappear. Remember, this layer hasn't got any effects applied to it yet. That's why we can see the original image um, on top there. We can always hide it to see what's beneath it, but I want to make it visible for the time being because we're going to put this cool effect called a um, photocopy filter on top of her now and then we're going to blend the two layers together to get our pop art kind of look okay so with the girl copy layer selected first thing i want you to do is head over to the little um, boxes that you see here down the bottom left of your toolbox mine are currently pink and white and i don't want them pink and white i want them black and white so there's a couple of little black and white boxes there that will allow you to change it back to black and white so make sure yours are black and white as well okay remember them Two boxes here represent the foreground and background colors. So I've got a black foreground color and a white background color. Alrighty, so once you've got the black and white selected, we can now go up to the filter uh, menu at the top of the page. Choose the filter gallery. And look for the folder that says sketch. Okay, and inside of the sketch folder there, you'll see the photocopy effect that I'm talking about. Okay, and it's going to look something like this once you put the um, photocopy effect on. You can play around with the levers to get different effects here. So you can add more detail, you can make it lighter or darker. But what I'm looking for here is probably about, about three or four for your detail. I'm going to go with a four, and then the darkness, I want it cranked right up to about 50. We really want to see those black lines come in. And click OK. Oh, actually, let me just change, change this detail a bit. Just looking at a skin there, maybe bring your detail back down to three, okay, and then press OK. All right, now that's looking a bit ugly at the moment, but what we're going to do, as I said before, is blend these layers together. So with the girl copy layer still selected, we're going to change the blend mode, which is this drop-down box that says normal. And we've got all these different options of blending our layers together here. Okay, now I don't mind color burn and I don't mind multiply, so... It's up to you which one you choose. Um, if you choose multiply, there's one more step you're going to have to follow with me in just a sec. But if you like, you can do color burn, which doesn't have that kind of freckly, speckly look on her skin. It's up to you, but I kind of like that grungy kind of look um, across her skin there. I'll just tone it down a bit, though, with my next um, with my next step. So I've chosen multiply for my blend mode there. So if you do want to try and tone down the speckles on her skin, we'll just add one more adjustment layer in. And that adjustment layer is going to be the levels here. 
Okay, now the levels property box up here will have three levers that you can play around with. You can just drag them around and see what sort of effect you get. Um, what I'm going to do is actually type into the boxes there. I'm going to type 20 for the first one. That's playing with the shadows. Okay, I think it's the shadows. Yeah, it was. And then this middle lever here is the mid-tones in the image. So I'm going to set that to 1. And then this last little lever here is playing around uh, with the highlights. So I'm going to set that to about 100. Okay, and you can see that the speckles on her skin have toned quite back now. So while they're still there, they're definitely not as harsh. And it still gives it that rustic, um, edgy kind of look. Okay, so that's probably all I need to do there. I think we are ready to add some color now into our pop art image. So what I'm going to do is select all of these layers and merge them together. Um, I'm going to show you a special way to do that. So first of all, come over to your layers panel and click once on the top layer, which is the levels one layer for me. Hold down shift on your keyboard and click the bottom layer. And that should select all one, two, three, four, five layers. With them all selected, right click your mouse anywhere on those layers and choose Convert to Smart Object. And that squishes them all down into one layer but still allows us to edit it. Now that we've got this um, Smart Object, I might rename it from Levels. Uh, what can I call it? I might just call it something like um, Pop Art Effect. And I'm going to apply another adjustment layer called a gradient map. And we're going to add two different colors into the image here. So if you head down to your little circle again at the bottom, and the second last one is the gradient map. At the moment, our gradient map is black and white. And we can change that by clicking on this bar up here in the properties panel. Just click once on the black square and change the color at the bottom here. Go with a bright blue to start with. And you can see all the blacks in the image now turn into that bright blue. And now her skin and her eyes and so forth are white. So we can change this white color here to something else like a yellow. That should stand out nicely with the blue. And click OK when you're done. That's what the gradient map adjustment is doing. OK. Now we're going to be adding some more layers in in just a moment. So I'm going to get you to right click your mouse on the gradient map layer and make it a clipping mask. Okay, and that just ensures that our gradient map effect is only being applied to the layer below it. So when we add some more layers in shortly, they're not going to be affected by this particular gradient map. All right, so the next um, thing we need to do is add in one more layer. Um, the way we do that is we come down to the little plus sign at the bottom of the layers panel, it's just next to the trash can there. And it makes a new layer that we're going to double click on and call background. Grab that background layer and drop it below all the other layers. So the background's on the very bottom, and our pop art effect's on top. And what we're going to do with the background is just simply colour it in. So there's a few ways you could do it. I think probably one of the easier ways is to just come over to your little boxes over here. Um, I've got the black foreground colour at the moment. I'm just going to click on that and change it to like a bright pink. Click OK. And simply go to Edit, Fill and click OK. And now you've got that nice fill color in the background there. And I think those three colors work pretty well together. All right, so what we're gonna do now, a little bit confusing this one, um, but what we're gonna do is we're going to make a copy of these three layers here, but we're gonna merge them together into their own new layer. That probably doesn't make any sense, so let's just do it and you'll see what happens. So what I need you to do is hold down Shift and just select those three layers to make sure they're all highlighted over here. So we've got all three layers highlighted. Now this is the tricky bit. I'll repeat myself just so you can um, get this right. But I need you to press four buttons at once here. It is Shift, Control, Alt, and the letter E. And when you press that, you'll see this new layer appear. So it's merged together those three layers and made a brand new layer with all of them merged together on that. So I'll do that again. That was Shift, Control, Alt, and E. All pressed together. Shift, Control, Alt, E. And that will create that extra layer that I was asking for. All right. Um, if you want, you can rename it. I might call it Pop Art Poster. And press Enter. 
And what we're going to do now is go up to the edit menu and choose free transform. And when I do that, you'll see across the top here, we've got some options that we can change. And where you've got W and H, that stands for the width and the height of the image. And I'm going to change the width to 50%. So I'm going to drop it uh, to half its actual size. And because we've got that little chain there locked together, the height automatically adjusts itself as well. So the image stays in proportion there. Okay, you can grab your move tool now, which is those bunch of arrows from your toolbox there at the top, and move that image up into the top left hand corner of the page. If you want, you can get rid of that um, layer in the background now. So there's three layers there, the gradient map, the pop art effect in the background that we don't need. You can highlight them and just hit the trash can to get rid of them. Okay. What we're going to do now is duplicate this image uh, three more times. So just press Control J three times. One, oops, click on the layer first. One, two, three. And you can see in my layers panel now we've got four copies of this image, one on top of the other. So you just need to use your move tool to drag them out and split the page up into fours here. So you've got the four different layers now scattered around the page. That's looking good. Uh, to finish off with now, we'll just change the color of these three remaining images that we've just put in. So click on the top layer here and I want you to add in an adjustment layer. So hit the little circle at the bottom and choose hue and saturation. In the properties up here, play around with the hue slider. Okay, start at one end and just work your way through to the other end and see which colors you think work best. You'll notice that some of them um, make her eyes a little bit weird and you can't see them fully, like those sort of colors. So you might need to just tone it down uh, by bringing it. Oh, that's a pretty good one there. Now you notice as I'm doing this, it's affecting all four of my images. If you just want it to affect one of the images, which we do in this case, right click your mouse on the hue and saturation here and create a clipping mask. And that way it affects just the one layer. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to go down to this layer here. So it's the post to copy two. I'll add in an adjustment layer um, and I'm going to choose hue and saturation. Don't forget, create a clipping mask. And again, play with your hue slider till you get a cool look. I reckon that one there looks pretty rad. Finally, come down to the pop art, post a copy, add in your hue saturation. Again, right click on it um, and make it a, oh, sorry, create a clipping mask. It just affects the one layer and play around with that slider one more time. That's that hue slider. I know I didn't want to go this way because it does make her eyes look a bit wonky. Um, does kind of have a cool effect though. So there we have it. Um, we've got our pop art looking pretty good. If you want, you can go back to these hue and saturation sliders and play around them a bit more if you need some more adjustments. But I think that looks pretty damn good in my eyes. Okay, so when you're all done, just go up to the file menu um, and you can export it probably as a PNG image. Okay, I think that will work best. All right, congratulations on creating a pop art image.